Okay. I think we're good and we're ready to start. So hello, everybody. Uh, from my side, today uh, we're going to present our methodology of uh, Perouge. This is our third or fourth presentation okay. we're doing, but for the first time we are doing it in English because we know we have many uh, many followers from all over, all over the world, from South America, from the UK, from France, so from US, and we wanted to give them uh, a chance to interact with us and to have some questions and to have deeper insights on the methodology. So for this spe special occasion, we have here our Enrico Di Manno, which uh, welcome and I thank for being here for support. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mike. And uh, we Pleasure. have uh, Nicola Muto, of course, and uh, Giussani Mauro uh, in the box. Hello. So I will leave the word to um, Enrico and uh, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Well, let's see how, how this first uh, English uh, uh, Phil Rouge presentation works out and see how uh, everyone uh, interacts with uh, with us. It's a pleasure to uh, to speak in English and hopefully uh, hopefully I'm not that rusty. So, uh, what my uh, my intent today is uh, just to uh, before we start is just to present myself. Uh, my name is Enrico Di Manno. I am a, a coach of an under-16 team that uh, plays in the national uh, championship in uh, Switzerland. I have a WIFA uh, diploma. I'm uh, also a professional coach of Swiss Olympic. And I also work for the Federation, uh, Swiss Federation for the uh, trainers. And I am an instructor for the trainers. So um, for my intent today is uh, to show you uh, the ins and outs of uh, this method. Uh, Phil Rouge, uh, which is arousing curiosity uh, among clubs and federations. So I, I would like to uh, open your mind and have a, a wider view of how uh, to form players and coaches and, with this method that I think is unique and it's always evolving and uh, uh, trying to do something new every time. So uh, let's start with this, uh, the fo uh, football training method of Fear Rouge. What what is uh, Fear Rouge? Uh, well, Fear Rouge is a philosophy. It's a working method. It's a flexible planning method that is adaptable to every category and is developed through six areas or containers, as we say. Okay. Like I said, this method is a working method that uh, that is flexible. That has relations. Uh, relations with uh, the coaching, which has a double coaching with uh, primary coaching with the first coach and the secondary coaching with the secondary coach. Then we have the relations between exercises <coughs> and the method. And it's a common line. And for us, it's very important to have a common line with, the, with this method because this method has a beginning and an end. So for us, it's very important. And this method is based on four concepts, which I will go into uh, deeply later on. I'll get in more into details where the concepts are uh, ball possession, ball recovery, transitions, and Dhamma, create, occupy space. The relations with the, the Field Rouge method. First of all, uh, the Field Rouge uh, method has its way of interacting okay the training of uh, the single is the priority for everyone for us the main actor is the single player for us we need i think we've lost enrico let us Test it out. Enrico, are you here? Okay. Magari Nick può dargli un colpo di telefono. So we have some problems with Enrico. We're gonna call him. I think the internet connection got lost. Uh, 
No, noi siamo online, sei tu che devi riprovare a rientrare, no, a rientrare. Cosa dice? Eh, sta provando a rientrare con, uh, con il link. Ok, ok. He's coming back. Just a few minutes. Ok. okay. Here we go. Here we go again. This is the beauty of the live, huh? <laughs> no problem. So I, know, I know exactly how actors feel when uh, they're online. And something happens. Uh, so we can we can about the Phil Rouge method and uh, with his six containers. And we are on the, the slide where um, I can't I can't see the slide at this moment, the PowerPoint. You can't? No, I don't see it. Do you see it now? Uh, no, no, I don't see the streaming. I don't see the PowerPoint. Okay, maybe it's working. Now. Let's see. Non c'è PowerPoint. No, non c'è PowerPoint. Let me. Give me a second. Okay. Vai, ma intanto magari continua la spiegazione che è una linea generale. Okay. Well, while, while we're trying to uh, solve our problems with the, with the PowerPoint, I'll go on with the, with the Phil Rouge method, which is a method that, uh, let's say, uh, it's, I've started working with uh, Mauro Giussani, who's, uh, who's the chief uh, developer of the method. And with this method, it's about, uh, I would say, 12 years that we're working on this method. It's continuously evolving. It's always trying to improve ways of uh, uh, training the youth sector and the coaches. So like I said, uh, it's bringing on a lot of curiosity by uh, the clubs and other federations. And uh, well, here we are with the PowerPoint so we can start again and see how it goes now with the, with the PowerPoint. As I said before, uh, training of the single is priority for everyone. We have the priority is the single player. He is the main actor, so we want to develop a player. We form through concepts and not schemes or models or formations. We don't believe in uh, formations of 433, 442, 4231, uh, whatever. Uh, we, 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 we believe in any animation and ways of seeing solutions in the game. We train through platforms without, without dead times. Everything that uh, we do in our training sessions are organized in programs, so we don't have dead times. The analytic platforms, we place the analytic exercises. Uh, I'll try to be more clear on that. For example, uh, we don't believe anymore in the uh, analytic part where there is just a one-on-one -on -one person. I pass the ball to you, to your right foot. You control it, then you pass it to the left foot. Or going to a dribble, a cone. You'll never see a cone in the middle of the field. Okay, You'll see an opponent that you have to dribble an opponent. So for us, the uh, analytic classic part is no longer used or better it's not the best way uh, to train players because they're not going to see uh, cones in the middle of the field. Uh, when we bring progressions, we bring them through uh, variants or variabilities for, uh, to improve the technical, tactical, athletic part and mental part. We uh, work from the known to the new, consolidating what we, uh, what we have done. So we also have that aspect. We, we try to, to work on something that we already have done, that we know we already saw it in the past, and we try to make it better. And we work on the consolidation of what we've done 
also in the other uh, training sessions. Okay, Mike? Yes. Okay, the common line, uh, the working line of Field Rouge is this. The common line of uh, Field Rouge is, is work between all categories. There's a common line from the under 12s to the under 18 teams. We have, a, a, as we, as we call it, a Field Rouge, which is a common uh, line, which is logical between all categories from the under 12 to the under 18, taking in consideration the age the group and uh, what level the players are. We have same concepts between the different categories from the under 12 to the under 18. We work with the same four concepts. We have same reference exercises in all categories, which are the basic test, which we call the base of the concept. There's one uh, exercise, which is the base. And then we have other uh, exercises that we call under exercises and one transformation of exercises but I will go into details when it comes to the slide. We have animation of the match according to the concepts. We believe that uh, we try to uh, work as uh, realistic as we can in situations where are related to the match. So we try to be as very uh, close to the to game reality. Okay, Mike? The field rules relations, every trainer knows to uh, the work of the other trainers. Like I said, I'm a trainer of the under 16, but I know exactly what the under 14 are doing, under 13 are doing, and under 12 are doing, because we have a common line of work and we have steps between years. And we, I know exactly what the other uh, categories are working and seeing that we all work on the same concepts the work of each category is related to the others, as I said. We have the microcycles, which is a yearly cycle, planning. For, uh, planning. We have mesocycle, the monthly cycle, microcycle, which is a weekly cycle, and the single training sessions. They are all related, and they, we all work in uh, relations. Every exercise is related to the others. For example, one, in one exercise, you will find all four concepts. So you can work on different exercises and find all the concepts that we want to work on these exercises. Okay, Mike. Oh, great, coaching. So sometimes when, uh, when I start speaking about coaching uh, in Italy, the first question is, what is coaching? What do you guys mean about coaching? But uh, with the English language, uh, you know exactly what coaching is. So the field rules coaching is this. Coaching is interactive with players. Uh, we don't like to uh, have a coaching which is direct. Let's say, okay, you have to go from A to B and B to C and then D. No, we want coaching that's interactive with the players because we want players that are thinking, that they're trying to find solutions. And players can also develop in, in the exercise something different, okay? We want players that are thinking. We don't want players that are there that we can uh, use as players on uh, joysticks where you go A, B, C, and D. We don't want that. Uh, the trainers does not impose his football. Uh, I'll give you an example. If I have uh, two uh, attackers up front and uh, the only thing I want to do is put the ball straight up front, kick and run, you know, because I have two players up front who are really strong and they will always score goals. That's what we don't want that. We want a philosophy. We want a working method. Okay. We want our players to, to grasp and to know what we're teaching. So that for us is the most important thing. Uh, the trainer accepts the error as a means of improvement. Even here, uh, when we talk about an error, sometimes, ah, oh, you can't do that. You must not do that. You can't. No, no, that's not a way of doing. We have to accept the error because if a player makes mistakes, that means that player is trying, okay? If a player doesn't make mistakes, he's hiding between, uh, behind alibis. We don't want that. We want players that go forward trying 
mistakes and from there i can either bring a progression or a regression on on what he's doing but we have to accept the errors because if if he does errors that means he is trying okay the trainer observes i think that's the most important thing and knows the needs of the players okay you have to know who you have in front of you okay you cannot uh put an exercise where it's too complex for the players that you have in front okay so you have to you have to know exactly who you have you have to know uh what sort of qualities your players have and where what you know uh, what button you have to push to get those players to do certain things okay thank you mike oh, there was the, one, the last one. Uh, there was another one <laughs> okay <laughs> okay this is this is another an, an important thing uh the, the result is one of the educational components but not the priority for us it's not important to win okay it's part of teaching uh players to win that's fine but if you win a game and you don't teach them how to play or in a certain way for us it's a waste of time okay we want players that know exactly what we're doing we want players that comprehend our concepts our philosophy and we want players that are actors they are, they are aggressive and they they want to be in the in the game for us that's the most important thing not winning but learning okay mike okay okay these are the 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 four fil rouge concepts that uh well they're used all over the world for by every team and uh if you, professional teams or whatever these are the concepts okay when i have the ball and when i don't have the ball and i have to conquer the ball so when i have a ball possession or a ball recovery okay we want a ball recovery defending forward quickly we want players that are aggressive that they go up front trying to defend as high as they can because that's the most uh, important thing because if i defend higher up and i uh conquer the ball then i'm very very dangerous so we want players that are very very aggressive on that we have the transitions from offensive to defensive and defensive to offensive either reasoned or rapid okay when we talk about transitions if i conquer the ball let's say in a high zone of field which we call zone three i want a vertical transition i want as rapid as i can because i want to hurt the players i want i want to hurt the other team the opponents are also on uh, they're not organized so i want to be as rapid as i can to try to go straight on to the goal or if, uh, if i conquer the ball in the middle of the field in zone two and my body is positioned with my back to the 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 opponent's goal i would prefer a reason to transition you know okay we will build it up we maneuver from the, uh, from horizontally or vertically and then we can start going up in uh, in uh, the zone three. then we have the ball possession horizontal vertically on the ground okay we want players that know how to play football are technically good so they they want the ball we want players that are into into the game we want players that are not afraid to use the ball they are not afraid to uh, play uh with the ball or have a ball possession we want you know we we don't want players who saying it's uh, you know it's difficult to, to play soccer no soccer is easy when you have the knowledge and you have the confidence so we want players that can do this to have this both uh, possession and this confidence to play then we have create occupy space with and without the ball okay we want players that identify the space okay we want players who who can uh, get out of situation finding the correct space between the lines or put in difficulty uh, the defenders one defenders if i i'm between two players or three players who will the three of the players who will come and mark me so players who also understand and reason where the, that space can be uh, more adaptable and and be helpful for, uh, for the team okay mike
Okay, few rouge exercises. Uh, like I said, uh, exercise is only a means for development of the objectives or the aims or to reach our aims or goals, okay? Uh, we don't like saying, oh, that's a great exercise, that's a beautiful exercise. Yeah, but what, what, what's this, you know, the reason why you're doing this exercise? Exercises are meant to reach a goal, okay? And to make the players comprehend the concept that you want to work in that exercise. So each concept has a reference exercise called the basic, like I said, which is the base of the exercise. Each concept has two under exercises and one transportation exercise, okay? Uh, let me just stop a second on this and explain it, try to get it more into details and in the ins and outs of what, what this means. When we say two under exercises from the basic ex exercises, which is the base of all the concepts, is this. We have two uh, under exercises, which one is called the micro, where we go to work the detail of the tactical, of the technical part of that exercise. We have the mini, which is an exercise form the tactical part, where we want to work the detail on the tactical part. Then we have the basic exercise, which is in the middle, which it works the cognitive part in a technical and tactical way. And then we have one exercise, what we call maxi, okay, which is the transportation to the reality of the game, to the match that we will see on Saturday. So the spaces, the field, and everything that we want to work on the, on the, the game, we will put it in the maxi because it's closer to the reality of what we will see in the game on Saturday or on Sunday. Like I said before, every exercise contains all of the concepts. So in one exercise, you can find all four concepts. But it's uh, the coach who decides what concepts you want to work on. And your coaching will be very important to show that exercise and what your aim is and to work into that exercise. Every exercise can be integrated to the others through Matrioska. Okay. Uh, you have present the, the Russian dolls. There are big dolls with another small doll inside, and another small doll inside, and another small side. Uh, Matrioska is is uh, uh, where the exercises are combinable and can be worked together in union with the concepts. So one exercise can be combined to the other. And the union of these concepts can be worked in one single exercise combined. Okay. And um, Enrico, maybe I should interrupt you because there is a question uh, yeah. from Patrick, which stay, um, asks, what differentiates Firouge method from other soccer methods? Like I said, we're, we're not trying to, uh, to sell a glass of uh, water in the desert. You know, uh, there's millions of methods they can be as valid as Fil Rouge. But like I said, uh, this method has a beginning and an end. Okay. This method for me, uh, like I said, I, I've worked in many places. I worked in the United States. I worked in London. I worked in, uh, in Italy. And this method for me is uh, a method that, that's valid, that has uh, a common line, a, a logical line of working with players from the younger groups up to uh, the older groups. So you have always something that, that worked in a, in a way that the players, when they come up, they know exactly what uh, the philosophy is of, uh, of this method, what the concepts are of this method, and the way of, uh, let's say, managing uh, the games on Sunday, using this method, finding strategies, finding solutions, Okay, uh, this method is, like I said, is always evolving. So it's, it's a method that it, it's unique in its way because it's not restricted. It's adaptable to every uh, sort of player and any sort of uh, clubs. So you don't have to be oh, a professional to use this method, but you can be a regional team that can also use this method. You can adapt it to any way you want to use it. Like I said, you have to know who you have in front to get uh, the players to know. And then the most important thing is 
that players comprehend what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has a huge number of variables, even though there are just four exercises in the Firouz method methodology. Well, the different variations, uh, I think, you, is part of uh, of the progression of the regression of, of uh, what you want to do. Okay, because if we're talking about the variations or the wheel of the variations, if I see a, a progression in an exercise, I can make it more difficult by uh, changing the rules, my coaching, dimensions of the field. For example, I see uh, uh, my team has, they're excellent technically, uh, technically they're really, really good. So if I uh, sometimes shorten the distance and make it a little bit closer, I put them in difficulty. So the te technical base of, uh, of this team uh, will, will improve because I close the spaces, I, I put them in difficulty or I can bring a regression through variance, putting in, uh, as we say, uh, jolly or you can put in uh, different players in superior, uh, superior, uh, numerical superiority or we can have players who can, uh, can play with uh, different ways of uh, playing different uh, segments or geometric uh, geometric uh, uh, designs so mm -hmm. okay let me move on okay okay the exercises okay uh, like i said the, the the four exercises that we have we have also a name for every exercise as you can see uh, the value of the exercise is given by the content not by the beauty of the exercises, like I said. Uh, I'll give you an example for a Dama basic uh, is create, occupy space and uh, having players uh, identify that space. For us, it's important that players identify the space. And the te then we, uh, for example, if we show this organization in this video that you will see, we haven't taken out the errors or the mistakes, okay? As you can see, players are trying to identify the spaces where the, the squares are, okay? And they're coming out of spaces with a dynamic control, either opened or closed, away from the opponent, okay? As you can see. This is a standard form, and it doesn't matter how many plays you have. If I want to go into detail, I can also do a three versus three to get in more to the details of uh, what is the technical part or tactical part, as I said before. Where I want to work in this part here, the analytic part, the plate part, when I want to work the detail of the technique, of the control, dynamic controls, if you can see, players will go into the square, open up with a control, and come out dynamically out of that space. Right? You want to show the Milan transitions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. When we talk about transitions, um, in every game and every every exercise, we will see always transitions. When I uh, recover the ball, or when I have the ball possessions after recovery. So the transitions are very important. Here, we're actually in a situation where players have a transition to try to open up the spaces, okay? Vertically and horizontally, okay? In the length and width, okay? Trying to also to be with a change of pace when they do uh, recover the ball. And when they do recover the ball, they try to, uh, try to keep it, okay? It's either a reason the transitions or a rapid transition. And this one uh, was actually the, the standard form. So I'll, I'll go more into detail when, uh, when we get to the other uh, exercises. Okay, Mike? Mike, can you go to uh, the ball possession so I can go into more into detail with the ball yeah. possession with the concept? 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is what we what I said are the two under exercises, and this is the first uh, uh, under exercises from the basic exercises, which is called Barcelona Mini. And when we work the Barcelona Mini, we work on the technical priority. Okay, which the technical priority in this exercise Barcelona, as you can imagine, is uh, the passing lanes and the body pa uh, pasture. The way I put my body in in a, a way of controlling the ball. I'm always in a way where I have a different line of passing, okay? I'm not gonna go flat to my player, okay? I wanna go in a way that I see more field open and see as many players I can. So the, the body po uh, posture is very important in uh, uh, Barcelona. Okay, Mike. This is a Barcelona Micro, which is the technical part, okay, which is the technical priority, uh, which is a uh, through ball, as we try to uh, simulate the passing lanes where two players try to close uh, the box in the middle, and players outside try to, uh, to find passing lanes, open uh, lines, to get the ball from one player to the other, okay, with a dosage of uh, passing. And and also with open and closed controls. Okay, when I receive the ball, I want an open control or a closed control, depending how I receive the ball. And always trying to find free lines. So the ball, as you see the players on the outside, also move to give uh, open lines. As we, as we say, uh, they're in the, the light zone where I see them. Okay. Okay, this is uh, Barcelona Maxi, which, which is the ball possession, which is uh, the transportation to the, re the reality of the game that we'll see in the match on Saturday. Okay, so the concept of the animation of the ball possession goes from one side of the uh, zone, zone one, to zone three, where we have players that simulate actually uh, construction from the back in the different zones of the field to try then to go to the to the offensive uh, zone, which is the zone three, to score. So it's very close to the reality of the game. As you can see, we have players who are on the outside, the lateral zone, okay, where we use as uh, players that can uh, go on the outside, where we have also an horizontal or vertical ball possession. That's why we have the jollies on the other uh, uh, lateral zones of, of the field. Okay. Okay, Mike. Okay. Uh, I try to, to maybe stay a little bit more on this because I really want to get into detail on this. Uh, when we call uh, the Matrioskas, okay. Uh, the exercise, like I said, are combinable. Okay, because some people always say, yeah, but okay, you have four concepts. You have four exercises for every concept. Okay, so if you say it's four, eight, 12, 16 exercises, aren't, aren't the players tired of doing this? No, no. Because if I do it in a matrioska way, for example, uh, what we call a horizontal matrioska, it's in the same concept. For example, if you see in the blue squares, which is the Roma concept, which is the ball recovery, I can work a different exercise with two concepts. One, which is uh, basic, which you have the cognitive part, which is technical and tactical part, with the detail of the micro Roma, which is the detail of the te uh, tactical, uh, technical part of the exercise. So it's four exercises, now you've got five exercises. So you can build up as many exercises as you want doing this uh, matrioska. And when we call the vertical matrioska, it's a matrioska between two concepts. Okay, so I can work the Barcelona, which is a ball possession, okay, with a basic exercise, which is a cognitive part. And then I can work it with a, with a Dama Mini. So in Barcelona, I can create an exercise combined, putting a union 
of the concepts together to create a new exercise where my aim is to have Barcelona, a ball possession, okay, going from A to B, using C in horizontal, okay? But every time I go from A to B, I want the players to do a dynamic control, okay? And I want players to identify the space. So once I receive the ball and I pass the ball, I have to create a new space for my player. So I have an interchange of space. Okay, so I have one player that comes in, another player that comes out. But we're still in the ball possession, Barcelona. Okay, so I'm working two con uh, concepts, okay, in one single exercise. So you can imagine how many exercises come out of this uh, Matrioska. Okay, Mike? Mm -hmm. Yes. I hope I was about uh, very clear on that. I wanted to stay a little bit longer, so. You were, you were. Okay, this is what uh, we had the question before that uh, I've actually answered. Uh, the progressions of the exercises are through to uh, the variants, okay? So we have the game concepts, okay, that I can change in, in a progression using rules, using players, uh, six, on, uh, six on nine or, or five on four or on three on uh, three against two. You can have different zones of the fields where you can work it to change the, uh, our aims. The field dimensions, I can make it uh, shorter because I want my uh, tactical part, uh, technical part to be very sharp. I want players to be quick, read the exercise, and be quick also on the technical part. So I close the space and I, I bring a, prog a progression on that. Or organization of the fields, okay? Organization of uh, what exercises I want to do and how I want to do it. So these variants will bring either a regression or progression of what I want to do in this uh, exercise, okay? Okay, in Field Rouge, uh, we have uh, all the specific exercises uh, are related to the concepts. As you, as you can see, everything rotates around our concepts that for us are very, very important. Even the specific exercises for goalkeepers, uh, specific defenders, specific attackers, we have all related to the concepts. Okay, I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, I'm also responsible for the SF, which is uh, the National Federation of Switzerland, for the, for the strikers. So my method that, that I use with Phil Rouge is this, everything that is related to the final part of the concept. For example, if I'm working Roma in uh, my microcycle, okay? My attackers will work in the same week, the same concept, okay? Because I want my players to know that in that concept, the, uh, the final part is the, uh, the, the, the strikers, so they know how to finish the concept. So, for example, if I work Roma, as I said before, which Roma is uh, ball recovery, okay? I'm gonna put situations on my strikers where they will uh, where they will orientate the play of the defenders. They will go defending forward. They will separate the player once they go to the to the body on a one-on-one -on -one situation. They will uh, protect the ball, and once they protect the ball, it's the first pass that they will give to the player who will go on a one-on-one -on -one situation. So. Everything is related to what the concepts are that we want to work in that micro cycle. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sure that many, many of us uh, have already seen this. Uh, this is the path to the formation of your rouge. Okay. Uh, this is not only for the players, but this is also for, uh, for the coaches and it's a way of, uh, of walking through what we call the, the comfort zone, where we have security, we have certainty, it's easy. You know, we have players that are always in this comfort zone. Uh, 
we don't want that. We want players that come out of that comfort zone. We want players to experiment something new. We want players to go into the fear zone. Uh, like I said before, they have to make mistakes. So they go to the fear zone. That's not a problem. Okay. They're there. They try. They make mistakes. Once they pass that fear zone and they try to do things in a certain way, then they will go to the learning zone. Okay. Where there's a development of the content, a development of the skills, improvement of the skills. Okay. And once they improve the skills and they get better on that, then we have the growth zone, which, is, which we say where the magic happens, okay? That's where the, the zone where everything is exciting, okay? This is where you live your dream. This is where you have the full, uh, gain full uh, fulfillment of what you have done, okay? Because you've gotten out of the comfort zone and, and you've walked your way up to the growth zone. Sometimes you you you'll you'll go back and you 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 know you have five steps up and then you have to go back two steps to then go back again and grow uh, in the the growth zone. Okay, Mike. Okay, this is the pyramid of the formation of Fuel Rouge, where the concepts are put in relations, and then we have to the game. Okay, so uh, as we said, we have the environment, the players, the trainers, okay? We have the emotions of, uh, of what we do, the passion, the cognitive aspects of the, the, the concepts. Then we have the micro exercises, okay? It, it's the uh, experimental uh, part, the technique of the concept going into detail. When we talk about micro we're always talking about the detail of the technical part of what we want to do in that, that exercise. Then we have the mini exercise, which is the tactical part, the experimentation of the tactical part in the exercises where we work in detail. And my coaching will be related only on the tactical part. Okay, I will not uh, stay there and work on all four concepts or all four different things. No, I'm going to work on that detail on the mini. When we have the basic exercises, as I said before, it's the cognitive part between technical, tactical, and also the mental part. And then we have the maxi exercises, which is the transportation to the game, to the reality of what we will see on Sunday. All this is worked in a uh, pyramid way. Okay, so we can work it up and have a way of players of experimentally uh, experimenting and working the different details on different exercises. Okay, Mike. Okay, with Phil Rouge, you can develop progressions between categories. And you can see even here with the different categories, we work on all four concepts, all four same concepts. Uh, there's a difference in the age group. So naturally, uh, with the under 12, it's an introduction of the concept. It's simple experimentation. Uh, we let them play. We let them see how it's done. We let them uh, work situations out. We don't, uh, we don't stay there and impose our way of thinking. We, we let them experiment, okay? With the under 13, we try to get more into detail, deepening of the concept, always in a simple experimental way. Okay, we, we don't, we don't uh, go in, like I said, the PlayStations, A pays, uh, goes to B, B goes to there, whatever. Okay, with the under 14, is try to get a perfection of the concept in a complex uh, experimentation. We start getting them in... Um, Let's say we, we, we try to interact with the players, okay, to experiment something a little bit more complex. So we're educating the players to do something different with the under-14s, where they already worked underneath in the 12 and 13. And in the 15, we try to develop these concepts, okay? In a complex experimentation way, we have uh, uh, maxis. We try to work with the maxi with the players. Uh, we try to work with the uh, matrioskas to, to, to get them going. 
definitely. And we also want to put these players also in difficulty. Okay. We, like I said, we want, we want players that, that find solutions. So we do try to make it more complex for the under 15s. Okay. Um, Enrico, if I can interrupt you, we have a yeah. question from Felipe, which okay. should appear now. Okay. Okay, Felipe, I think that you will see that uh, later on. We'll get into detail for this. So how do I organize the micro cycle according to the days of the week regarding micro and micro principles together with the loads and intensities? Okay, I will go into detail with that. Okay, uh, I think it's the next slide that will show more uh, how we work this micro cycle and uh, the yearly planning cycles. So I, I will get into in detail with that. Uh, hopefully I, I can be clear also on this. So I'm just going to finish uh, this situation. With the, under, with the under 16, we have uh, the situational application where we put players in situations realistic to the game in different zones of the field. For example, uh, we want players that are in zone three, very high zone of the field. And we have one, uh, one team that tries to uh, build from the back. And we have another team that tries to uh, uh, recover the ball while the other team is, is building from the back. So we have the concept of, of uh, ball possession and a recovery. And going up front in defending forward and going to try to get the ball as high as we can in that zone of the field where we can be really dangerous and really hurt the opponent. Okay, then we have the under 18. Uh, that's the strategic part with the concepts, use of, uh, use of uh, with the opponents. I always say to uh, my players, okay, uh, what is important on the match day, it's not the strategy, okay? Because I tell you, how many times coaches have a strategy to work on that day in base of what team they're going to uh, to find in front of them. Okay, so I have a strategy. Okay, that team plays in this way. Okay, my strategy will, okay, let's close them on the left side. Uh, let's bring them uh, where we want. As soon as they get there, okay, we double up. We get them going. Once we get going, we straight ball up front. Okay, then you go to the match day and you find a team that doesn't have that strategy. You'll have a team that's going to put ball forward as high as they can because they have two players up front. What do you do? Your strategy is not going to work. So it's the concepts that will bring, uh, how do you say, it's going to bring a, a, a difference in the, in the match. Okay, because it's the concept that's going to contrast what you're going to find in a game game you're going to find always different situations so it's not the strategy that's going to work but it's your concept that you use that are uh in the in the weekly uh micro cycles or uh, monthly cycles that are going to help you out because you're going to recognize the situation and players will recognize situations so they will bring uh corrections to that to that part okay okay mike i think now we're going to get uh, Felipe's answer in the in the next slide Yes, uh, volevo solo salutare velocemente Giuseppe Geria, del responsabile del Pescara, che ho visto che si è appena connesso. Diamo il benvenuto anche a lui e proseguiamo velocemente. Ok, okay Felipe, this, this is for you. I'm going to try to get into uh, more detail of how we work the, the Miso cycle, which is the monthly cycle, which is composed with four micro cycles, which are four weekly cycles. Okay, so we work on one concept for three consecutive microcycles, which we call the primary accent. Okay, that means if I want to work ball recovery, I'm going to work ball recovery for three weeks in a row. Okay, and that will be my primary accent. That's going to be my goal for the first, for the three weeks. Okay. The other uh, microcycles, for example, in every microcycle is also combined with another concept, which is a secondary accent. That means I can work, uh, like I said, if I want to work ball recovery, 
In that microcycle, I can also put the secondary accent, which could be uh, transitions, okay? And the secondary concept changes every microcycle. So the primary concept, if we're working Roma, okay, will remain the same for three weeks. I will play us that for three weeks we'll be working uh, ball recovery. But every week I will change the secondary concept to make them uh, understand something different. Okay. The conditional aspects are developed through uh, the plate forms. We, we like to work the athletic part uh, with the ball. Okay. We like, we, we like players to uh, get physically fit also with the ball. So everything that, that we do is coordinated with the uh, athletic coach that has uh, the preparations also with the ball. So all, all the, the, the forms that we use are also in relations to the intensities that we want to do. Okay, so you said, how can we get the intensity working? For example, if I work uh, an intensity in one of the exercises, uh, for example, uh, ball recovery, and the intensity is very, very high, okay, my work with my uh, athletic uh, coach will be studying that to see in what, what, uh, what zone of uh, recovery these players are. Okay, what intensity we are working on. So that, that's also a part of what intensity we want to work on different exercises. Okay, for example, if I work the micro, the intensity will be very, very uh, low because I want to get the detail of uh, the technical part. Okay, also on the mini, it's going to be on a low intensity. Okay, if I work the basic, it's going to be on a high intensity. Okay, because it's very cognitive. So we get players working, thinking faster and faster and faster. And then we also, also the combinations are, are very, very quick. Okay. And then we, when we transfer the transport on the maxis, we also have a very high intensity because we want to get as close as we can to the reality of the game that we will see on Sunday. Okay. So I hope I was clear on this. Okay. Mike. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Also, when we have uh, the microcycles, uh, the first trainer coaches the primary accent. Okay, that means for three weeks, uh, I will be uh, interested in working the re ball recovery, for example. So I'll be there and my coaching will be on ball recovery for three weeks, while the assist uh, assistant will work the secondary accent, okay? So I'll work the primary accent and I will push it very, very hard, okay? While I have somebody underneath me who's sustaining the secondary part, okay? So he's giving also this sustain. We just don't have ball recovery, but we have transitions. What do we do when we're in the transitions, okay? We have reasoned or rapid, but as soon as we're there, we want a ball recovery going up front, defending forward aggressively, okay? Come on. Last one. The fourth microcycle is called the situational, okay, where the dominant part is the uh, athletic part in uh, correspondence with the technical, tactical, mental part of, uh, of what we want to do in the fourth situation. So, for example, uh, if you see, maybe in the next slide, uh, I will, will help you out to understand better. When we call the situational part, we, we have the dominant, the athletic part. So with the, uh, the athletic uh, coach will prepare uh, different exercises during the micro cycle that are specific for conditioning. But we don't leave technical, tactical, and the meta part alone. Okay, they're worked in uh, relations with the athletic part, but the dominant part will be the athletic part in situational, in a situational way. Okay. Enrico, maybe can you go more into details about the competition time? Because Felipe was asking regarding the organization from the match day plus one and minus one. Okay. Um, 
in a match day minus one, we tend to have uh, a transportation closer to the game. Okay, so minus one, all, all my way of working and thinking is closer to what I will work on a Sunday on a match day, let's say. So on Saturday, I will work more uh, maxis, okay, which are very close to what uh, I want to do on the game. So, for example, uh, I will have a maxi Barcelona, okay, and then I will matrioske ma uh, maxi Barcelona with another concept, let's say another maxi, because that's what I want to see in a game on Sunday. So I'm going to be very, very close to what we want to. Uh, we want to do on Sunday in a game because that's going to be my tactical part. It's going to be uh, what I do in the, in the, with the concepts. It's not going to be my strategy. Okay. I'm not going to work a strategy uh, for Sunday. I'm going to work on my concepts. I want my players to be, uh, how do you say? Uh, I want, I want them to be the main actors on the, on the field. Okay. So I want them to make the game. Okay, I don't want to follow any other team. So on the minus one, everything will be related to what I will work in a match. Okay. This is uh, for an under 16 team, of course. Okay. Then with the under 12s or whatever, it's, it's different. Plus, when you have a uh, plus, plus one on the second uh, after after the match day, we usually work, as we said, in uh, plus one, we work on the, the micro, which the dominant part would be uh, the technical part, okay? Get into details of the technical part and work on something that it's, it's known. So we don't want something too complex on the day after a match, okay? Or the, or the first day when we come back from a match. We want something softer. We wanna work on something on the aerobic part, and uh, uh, other other parts of the, uh, not the mental part, but we want something to work on something different, which would be the technical part, the detail of the technical part, would be the micros, okay? Where, the, like I said, the intensity is not very high, okay? Because we, we don't want to come back from a game and start the first day with an intensity that is very, very high, okay? I prefer to work detail of uh, the technical part in the first day that we come back from a game. Okay. 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 Th maybe this one will is more in uh, in detail to what I said before. Okay. So if we take in consideration uh, the monthly cycle example is composed by four microcycles, like as I said before. Okay. As you can see, the primary accent is Dhamma, and we will work this primary accent for three weeks in a row. Okay, but you will see that the secondary accent changes every week. Okay, so the primary remains the same. We have something that players will always work on that they know. Okay, then we bring on something new on the secondary week. Okay, with the secondary accent. Instead, on the fourth microcycle, as I said before, is, is developed for uh, the situational part, which we call situational, the fourth microcycle, which is the dominant part, is the athletic part. Should I move on? Okay. Yeah, I think the... Oh, okay. Okay, I think, I think we're finished, so. Um, I hope that everyone uh, understood and I hope that everyone uh, so what, what what sort of passion we have with this method because i think once you're into this method and once you really start to work with it and see how it works uh you get into it really really deep okay then the passion of uh working with this method uh comes out and the most important thing i think it, it's adaptable to everyone and that's the the most important thing of this method i think mm -hmm. okay yeah uh, we, we could see and feel your, your passion and I think you gave uh, uh, valuable insights about the methodology and I thank you because it was brilliant and um, I want to just say to our followers that we can keep in touch on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on our uh, webpage, on um, 
on our website. And um, yes, we'll see how to move forward now, um, if we're gonna do some more representation or not. But um, yeah, so thank you, Enrico. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, and um, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Ciao, ciao.